So this is the second video in the user submission series. Uh, really happy with how the last video turned out and you guys seem to really like it as well. It's been by far the most liked and viewed on the channel so far, so thank you for that. Uh, this next uh, board that I'm gonna be looking into is gonna be more on the PCB side just because it's a lot more uh, in-depth of a board and it'd be really hard to go into both. And the submitter wanted me to look at the PCB specifically. So this is from a user named Cameron and it is part of his final mechatronics engineering uh, program uh, project for it. It's based around an Atmega 328 microcontroller. It has a external uh, radio communication hub that it'll be using, which is UART controlled. It has a sensor connection on the bottom of the board, a real-time clock, and a high-resolution ADC. Uh, his biggest concern was with the SPI lines that route on the outer edge of the board. Uh, and I'll go into that, but there's also some other issues that I think might be more significant, and we can get into that uh, once we flip over to the PCB. So here is the schematic. Um, pretty well uh, organized. He uses separate schematic uh, pages for all of the blocks, uh, which is nice. I typically don't do that. Uh, just kind of personal preference, but it does make it nice and organized. So it takes a solar uh, panel input and then rectifies it to be charging a battery. And it can also use just an external power supply for it's called service pin. So I'm assuming just as like testing and if anything needs to be uh, used on it without a solar panel, it has the pin out for it. It has a external, uh, we can look at this, it has the external uh, ADC, and then it has the real-time clock on it also. Um, and then back to the main board, it's powered again by the main Atmega chip with an external sensor with UART. I don't know what external sensor it is, but it really doesn't matter. Same with the radio output. I don't know what uh, radio it uses, but doesn't matter. It uses SPI here, so this is a higher speed, so a little bit higher concern than the UART, since this can go at several uh, megahertz, where this is kind of topped out at 100,000K. And at the bottom, this is a constant current uh, ba uh, power management IC. I don't know what specifically this is needed for on the circuitry here. Obviously it goes to the external uh, connector, which is on the sensor. So it's something for that. Again, I don't know, but it really shouldn't matter. So before we get into the PCB, one thing I want to mention uh, that's pretty relevant to the PCB is on the power, uh, not this one. So on the power management side, these are do not populated here. Um, I'm assuming this whole thing isn't do not populated, but then this one also isn't. But either way, this whole unit, there are way more decoupling caps on this one and even here than there really should be to the point where on this chip, I think I looked and they recommend an output capacitance of like 10 uh, microfarad somewhere in that range so you're not going to get a very good output response just because it's way loaded on the output maybe there was a reasoning there um, but that was kind of the big thing that stuck out with to me when I was looking at the schematic real quick but like I said the majority of this is going to be looking at the board itself so first glances uh, it's, it's very spread out and that's pretty relevant to the amount of ADC connections there are. Uh, and the big reason for the spacing that I can see is this big decoupling cap, which is on here, which I honestly don't know why there would be a uh, 
polarized electrolytic cap on a output of a regulator. Um, the only time I've seen these anything with power management is when it's on the input side. If it's a really noisy input, the regulator should should not have a uh, low frequency enough ripple to where you need the electrolytic there. So I would think of removing this, which gives you a lot more space to join the at mega chip here with the ADC chip, which is right here. Um, and if we take off our uh, ground pores, a big thing that you need to keep in mind with two layer boards. And one thing that I always say is it's way easier to mess up a two layer board than it is a four layer because with a four layer, you get to have the luxury of a dedicated ground and power plane. With a two layer board, you don't. So actually, let me put this back on. So if you're doing a two layer board, the goal is to have one of your layers. It doesn't matter top or bottom. I typically do bottom just, uh, it's kind of how I got started and it's easier with the uh, primarily surface mount top layer components to not need as many vias. But whichever side you pick, the goal is to have one of your layers not broken up with uh, traces on it to have it simulate a true ground plane that would be on a four layer board. So these connections right here, the MISO line, the MOSI line, and the clock, so these are what his biggest concern was. And if you highlight these nets, you can see they run from the Atmega all the way up to the ADC and over to this chip, the RTC, and then all the way up to the external uh, radio. And all of these, both the uh, clock and the MISO and MOSI have similar routes. So that was his biggest concern. And honestly, uh, SPI isn't that fast of a protocol to where it's usually not a huge issue if you have long runs, but this definitely has an issue with um, the way the ground plane is broken up because not to get too in depth with how loops are formed, but basically your uh, sending current will follow the trace. Obviously, that's the only place it can go. But then the return current has to get back to where it was sent from. And on a low frequency sig signal, it'll follow the path of low lowest resistance, which would take it from here straight to there. If it's a high frequency signal, it will follow the path of lowest impedance, which actually follows the trace on a power or ground plane directly under it. So the problem with this board, with the planes being so broken up, is when this signal has to follow back, there are a lot of cuts in this plane to where the signal is either gonna have to jump across a via or it's gonna have to go around one of these traces. So like I said, typically it's not an issue with SPI, but in this case, I wouldn't be surprised if there is a decent bit of noise on this just because it is gonna have to take a pretty long loop. Um, so that is definitely an issue, but honestly, the biggest issue I see with this board that will cause signal degradation is the way that the ADC lines are laid out. Um, and it looks like the ADC from the Atmega is tied to the ADC with the dedicated chip, which I'm sure is just so we can get a confirmation on both lines, which I guess is fine, but the ADC lines you need to have as short as possible and a dedicated area, which is only analog signals. Now, most of these seem to just be monitoring like uh, the solar panel volt uh, voltage, the battery voltage. So it doesn't need to be super precise, 
but their 100% is gonna be a lot of noise in each of these lines because they are crossing over many different signals. They're going through a through hole connector and the other end of it is pretty long as well. Cause you have to keep in mind these analog signals are every inch that they have to travel is a, another inch that they can pick up interference. So you wanna keep these as low as possible. And I get they wanted to have the test points here, which is fine, but whenever you throw a, even a via on an analog line, it's gonna cause some sort of a radiating point. So you wanna limit that. So those are the two biggest issues. And since those were the main things that he wanted me to look at, I would say that there probably should be some changes on this board to accommodate that. If I were to be doing this board, I think what I would do first off, these are pretty small surface mount components. Uh, they're 805s. So if you're able to solder 805 passives, I would 100% get a surface mount at Mega if that's possible. And the diodes and some other stuff, I would make it all surface mount to save some space. I would remove some of the excess capacitors that do not populate, and I would shove this at mega up to the top, maybe even right here, to where your SPI bus has a much shorter range to go to your three chips. The bottom module that uses UART, since UART is much slower, make that take the longer pathway from the top of the board. And then for your analog stuff, as long as you have all of the digital signals up here, you can probably get away with making a nice analog section right in here and only have the analog signal cross or get near digital signals when it has to go to the battery output on the chip. So the goal really with an analog trace is to keep it as far away from digital signals as possible, whether that's a dedicated analog plane or a keep out section, uh, it really depends on what kind of resolution you need. But I think really by moving this at mega up to the top, I think you could rectify most of those issues and just force there to be more degradation on the UART line, which isn't gonna be an issue because it's so much slower than the SPI. But other than those changes, which seem drastic, but one of the hardest things with learning uh, board layout is to realize that the hardest part of laying out a board isn't the traces, isn't the power management, thermals, any of that. It's where to place components. And if you place components well on a board, it makes every other step that much easier to the point if you place a board properly, it can almost be done by an auto router. Not that I would ever recommend that, but if you place it properly, you really can get away with subpar uh, traces and even ground and power planes just by making sure that the analog section is separate the high speed section is separate and short, and all of the other connections that aren't as important are managed later and not as high priority, like for example, the UART line or some of the other digital uh, components here. Um, but other than that, oh, and you can get way smaller crystals um, than some of the crystals that are used here. Not that it's super important, but by pushing everything up, you're gonna gain a lot of extra space by shrinking down some of those components. Same with the inductor here. Um, that's not a huge deal. Some of the inductors are pretty big. Um, but other than that, uh, definitely a decent layout and it may work as it is, but I think without a ton of hassle, I think, think it can be made quite a bit better and even smaller and save some money on fabrication. So that is my quick 
way too quick overview of this board and thank you for the submission and keep sending in boards and I will get to them uh, in the next video. Thank you.